the other thing uh, the other thing we should remember is that uh, adaptation investments and returns may have uncertainties in the calculations as we said but the information that is available to decide on adaptation itself uh, is also uncertain and we will see a couple of points about this as I mentioned adaptation information has to be very region and local specific and the current suite of models that are used for IPCC projections are not terribly good at uh, producing very local information let's say on sea level rise or uh, precipitation change they have good skill for let's say regional temperature change given all the uh, human activities emissions land use change uh, and uh, reducing emissions by various actions and so on <clears throat> this one uh, argues here that the models are getting good at uh, uh, projections so it looks at the past few decades from 1970 to 2020 or so and it's looking at the model ensemble spread which means you take one model or multiple models and you force them with all the known increases in uh, greenhouse gases aerosols land use change uh, various other things deforestation and so on agricultural activities and you look at what is the range of solutions they produce as far as the temperature trend as a global mean is concerned so there is still that constraint so it's showing this uh, red line with uh, observations plus there is the estimate of 2019 added here <clears throat> from 2018 to 2019 um, and you can see that the model ensemble mean, mean of all the models, shows some similarity in the interannual or year-to-year -year variability, but uh, much better agreement in terms of the overall trend. So when you have a model, it has its own internal dynamics. It takes energy from the sun, it moves it around, goes into the ocean, melting glaciers, uh, vegetation, uh, atmospheric circulation and so on. So it doesn't necessarily have the same year-to-year -year variability as the real world as you can see here. For example in the real world you had a strong <coughs> El Nino in 97-98 but the model year 97-98 may not have the El Nino at the same time and so on. Okay, So despite all those details models are getting better at global average temperature projections and with that we have to remember that future projections also depend on various scenarios we talked about representative concentration pathways not in great detail but I have it in other courses on my channel that you can look up and just to remind ourselves here are the various projections so projected by 2100 as a baseline where we stick to business as usual <coughs> And the current policies and Paris agreements and so on bring us down to various levels and we are trying to stay below 2 uh, degrees centigrade or 1.5 degrees centigrade uh, with certain probability by 2100 and so on. So these are the range of solutions that may happen in the coming years and decades that have to be considered for all the adaptation options which means there are uncertainties in the information that's available for making the adaptation decisions so all the decisions have to be made under uncertainty plus the regional specificity is very important as you can see here this is going from beginning of 1900s to uh, 20 uh, 20 or so here, uh, 2020, yeah, and you can see that it started, so these are deviations from a, a base period which is something like 1961 to 1990, it doesn't matter, you can move it around and the numbers will change a little, but the story doesn't change, that you start with cooler than the baseline uh, at the beginning in the 1800s, late 1800s, and you get warmer than the baseline everywhere except one or two locations like here in the North Atlantic the so-called Greenland, Iceland, Norwegian Sea which is related to various dynamics which we won't get into but the point is that the <coughs> heat waves you expect extreme rainfall you expect sea level rise you expect uh, for example here is the sea level rise between 1992 uh, and 2015 from satellite data and you can see that there are regions where 
the sea level rise is much higher than the global average and there are regions where it's lower uh, parts of the Indian Ocean for example parts of the islands over here versus the islands over here and so on so this information is critical for future projections that are available and how that information can be used for adaptation so we are always forced to make decisions under uncertainty in that sense so here is an example designing amid uncertainty the Thames River the Thames barrier uh, works to hold back storm surges and high tides protecting 1.3 million people in the London metropolitan area. So the Thames barrier is an iconic example of building robustness and flexibility in the face of uncertainty. By holding back storm surges and high tides it helps to protect 1.3 million people, 275 uh, British pound, billion British pounds in property and infrastructure and places of high historical and cultural value from <coughs> flooding. When it was opened in 1982, the Thames Barrier had a design life until 2030. However, studies show that based on current sea level rise projections and the ability to raise embankments, it can now protect London until 2070. So there you go in terms of benefits and in returns on investments and protecting not just infrastructure but also cultural and heritage sites. The Thames Estuary 2100 plan sets out uh, a long-term approach to managing this change and what should be done for different rates of sea level rise so there is the uncertainty we don't know for sure how fast the sea level will rise and social change to 2100 and beyond the plan accommodates multiple objectives including flood protection river access species habitat and quality of life there are other details, of course, even if, for example, a city like Mumbai wants to protect itself against sea level rise, the projection of uh, what sea level rise will be out to 2100 may not actually matter because ultimately that decision may depend on how much the city is willing or able to spend to protect itself. So it may be able to spend only enough to protect itself against 50 centimeters of sea level rise, whereas the projections may say it will go to 1 meter by 2100. Plus, even with 15, 50 centimeters, you may have increasing cyclones of stronger intensity, which may bring more um, floods and inundation. Or you may also recover many of the natural defenses like wetlands, reefs, mangroves, um, etc. to accomplish some natural defenses. So all these sorts of uncertainties have to be uh, dealt with. Okay, So making decisions under uncertainty is part of life. We all do it. How we plan for the future is always based on some mental model of what we want to protect ourselves against or what we want to be prepared for. like college fund for the children or buying a house, buying a car, better car, moving to a different place, retiring, etc, etc. So in this case, of course, we are talking about common goods, shared resources, shared property, shared cities, towns, cultural sites, and so on. So we'll look at some examples and some sectors that we mentioned and what are some of the issues to deal with when it comes to adaptation uh, at regional specific actions.